What's going on everyone? Good morning, Move Well University followers, doctors, everyone out there who's been following our stuff or been part of our program for the last couple of years. I wanted to highlight a chapter in our book, Move Well Secrets, and I started reading through this. You know, I, I wrote this uh, a while back, and the first thing I stumbled on is I was using the example of pelvic rotation. When you see that in a squat, what does that mean? How do you look at that from a chiropractic standpoint or just a corrective standpoint? And um, so just real quick, before we get started on this conversation that I'm gonna have right now, or this discussion, I should say, that gets to be a conversation if I could hear from all of you too, but you can comment below and you can make it a conversation, is um, you can get this book, Move Well Secrets, this is the one I'm gonna actually go over chapter six briefly. You can get this book for free, you just cover shipping, go to movewelluniversity.com slash book, and we'll send this out to you. We still have a big stack of these that we're sending out, I got a bunch printed, and. I'm sending them out, you just cover the shipping, and it's a pretty quick read. I mean, it's not too thick of a book, but uh, there's 18 easy to follow chapters that really help lay out, do you want to add a department in your, in your chiropractic clinic? Do you wanna have better care for your patients? What type of model do you want in practice? What type of model do you have now? Do you believe that you have to see this high volume, exhausting, you know, model of chiropractic where you see hundreds and hundreds of patients a week and you break down your joints and, and you start to get disgruntled as a chiropractor because you're just so exhausted and tired and you take so much time away from your family and you're giving it to your practice and your patients and you just want to have a smoother model that's impressive, not just from a standpoint of how it flows, but also what you can do for your patients. Your your patients in your community come in, they see your clinic, and they say, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. You as the chiropractor can choose, do you wanna just be purely in the adjusting mode only? Have your staff help with the other systems? Do you wanna be involved in those systems as well? Actually talking the talk and helping with some of the corrective movement standpoints. Uh, for me, quite honestly, I'm, I'm 16 years in practice. I've done lots and lots of adjusting, and I like talking about movement. I like. I like doing different movement-based assessments and checks and diff you know, just diving deeper in the, in the patient diagnosis process, figuring them out, uh, understanding how they have a segmental problem that I've been adjusting, they have a postural issue, and they have a movement issue, and seeing how these all tie together and then being able to present a solution for them, and then it works, and patients get it, and they follow along, and they have guidance and resources they can turn to, and it's like this just beautiful system that all fits together. That's how we operate in our clinic. Um, we have some different ways that we've done this in the past where we'd have lots and lots of staff. We're actually moving more and more now towards having less and less staff. Um, and it's really working well. And I'm excited about that because I think a lot of other chiropractors out there can resonate with that because it's rare for chiropractors to have a lot of staff in your practice. And we are currently lower staff than we've been before and things are actually running even smoother. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning from this and I'm sharing, sharing this with other doctors. So uh, what I wanted to share inside of Move Wall Secrets, I'm gonna flip the camera around. All right, is chapter six. And I'm just gonna go through and read the first couple pages, but it talks about segment posture movement. And it says, in this chapter, we're gonna cover the concepts of this three-tiered approach that we use in practice, segment, posture, and movement. This model has defined who we are as a unique and different approach to chiropractic and has helped build many successful relationships with other healthcare providers and movement professionals in our community. Let's start with posture. You have some different groups out there who look at posture and I will openly admit I am biased. I've gone through all the training and earned my advanced certification in chiropractic biophysics and I haven't seen anything else that's as meticulous or evidence-based in regards to spine modeling and corrective care. I learned a detailed understanding of how to assess a patient's posture in their static stance, and I learned how to understand how x-ray plays a part in this equation. How is that gonna reflect on their segmental alignment and their movement capability? Static posture can predict how a patient is going to move to an extent. For example, if a patient's pelvis is rotated, and this is what I titled this whole thing, it's talking about pelvic rotation, if a patient's pelvis is rotated counterclockwise in comparison to their feet when they squat, they corkscrew down, okay, and all of us have seen this when someone squats, they corkscrew down, um, which 
is an injury waiting to happen. There's a reason for that, which could be a leg length inequality. So that's a structural issue. It could be a short leg. It could be a leg length inequality or an imbalance between gluteus medius, QL, other pelvic stabilizing muscles, which is like a sling on the opposite side. It could be a problem on the sagittal plane, but often the SI joint is normally blamed. That's what us as chiropractors, that's what us as chiropractors have been sold that thought process. Oh, someone has a rotation in their pelvis or they move a certain way, they have an SI joint problem. Adjust their SI joint and the problem is going to magically go away. Well, I, I challenge you, is that reality? I'll keep reading. Back to the book. So it could be a problem in the sagittal plane, but often the sacroiliac joint is normally blamed. How many of you have adjusted the SI joint and seen these rotational pelvic postures go away in 100% of your patients? How about 80%? How about 50%? Okay, 20%. My conclusion after now 16 years in practice, if you want to best help your patient, you must address posture with a specific postural corrective approach. So what I'm insinuating is that when you adjust the SI joint only, when someone has a pelvic rotation seen in movement or even in static posture, it doesn't go away a large percentage of the time because that's possibly one component or possibly that's not even a component that's all that relevant in some of these cases. So you have to be able to figure out what is relevant. You have to figure out how to fix this stuff. All right, I know this is controversial for everyone that thinks that the sacroiliac joint fixes everything. And I'm a Gonstead chiropractor, so believe me, we do lots of pelvic analysis, and that's, that's what's still taught in Gonstead a lot of the times in the older style of Gonstead. In the newer styles of Gonstead, in my opinion, which I would say Gonstead Methodology Institute, they really think outside the box as far as trying to look at more variables. When you look at the postural in the movement component like we're doing, I think we've taken this even further and I think we have a lot to offer um, these techniques that have a really specific segmental approach. I think really to just do a complete job with your patient, you have to look at posture and movement. And just like Dr. Stephen Cox said, or all three, segment, posture, movement, absolutely. You have to look at all three. So I'm biased in that. I know it takes more time and more clinical understanding to really fix a patient with that, but the quote unquote purists in chiropractic that say everything's going to be fixed with an adjustment. I will say this. It's not true. It's just not true. And if you think you're going to roll the dice and send them to a physical therapist and that they're going to figure it out, that's not going to happen either because the physical therapist is flying blind without x-ray or any training on x-ray analysis. And so the physical therapist is taught to believe everything is muscular. Everything is like a functional movement thing for the physical therapists that even do functional movement. A lot of them do just very isolated, basic exercises in my opinion from what I've seen. And I love really good physical therapists. I have nothing wrong with them at all, but I'm telling you as a profession, they are handcuffed by the medical profession. They are dictated what they can work on and what they can't based on a diagnosis that is delivered to them by a referring medical doctor in most cases. So that profession, because they have sucked up to medicine, they are pretty much medicines, B-I-T-C-H, if you know what I'm saying. So back to the book. As chiropractors, you're already dealing with the segments. Some of you are addressing the posture as well, or maybe you're not. You need to be. But very few are utilizing a customized approach to movement. Most chiropractors I know practice with a global or segmental technique. Many are well equipped to do things with the spine, extremities, or muscle to get the patient out of an acute phase as quickly as possible. If a clinic is offering rehab, most of them do passive modalities such as electrical stimulation, ultrasound, ice, and heat. Spinal decompression is a common thing because you can put someone on a machine, which is really expensive and looks very fancy, and patients are charged a large premium. There is definitely a science behind spinal decompression. It's axial distraction with a pumping motion that can be helpful in certain disc issues but it can also be a detrimental therapy in certain cases. An important thing that I discovered is I was exposed to the research and teachings in chiropractic biophysics. So spinal decompression, when is that not warranted? Well, if someone has a decreased lumbar curve and you're putting axial distraction into that even further, you might give them temporary relief, but you're not supporting increasing lordosis in their lumbar spine. Sometimes spinal extension is gonna be most effective for this person or maybe very short term 
axial distraction in a pumping motion like spinal decompression and then transition them into extension. However, those who are just sold on spinal decompression is a one size fits all thing, never learns this, never knows how to analyze it, never knows where to put a three point bend into the spine to increase lumbar lordosis, doesn't know how to do a comparative x-ray properly to analyze this stuff. So there's a lot of missing stuff that where as a whole, these clinics that do laser and spinal decompression and then do hardcore marketing and hard sales on the patient and they get 100 people in and they close 20 of them and they think that's a success well you've turned away 80 percent that now think chiropractic is you know salesy or scumbaggishy or whatever or it's all about some kind of machine and not really hands-on approach or clinical excellence so that's my very um, opinionated opinion on that back to the book okay Let's see, in the fitness industry, posture is rarely part of any kind of assessment process from a personal trainer's perspective. With so much focus on movement, personal trainers really aren't well-trained to assess posture and definitely do not have any scope of practice to address the segmental component. I did an interview with a very knowledgeable personal trainer friend of mine named Marshall. We published this interview on the Move Well podcast and he talked about how he's gone through many certifications and all have something in common when it comes to referring a client out for an injury. He said, if you spot an injury or it appears someone is injured, refer them to a doctor. Doctor, okay? According to Marshall, that's the universal message taught at a variety of these certification seminars. So how much you wanna bet the patient will be encouraged to stop training with that trainer, instructed to halt their fitness and exercise. At that point, the patient doesn't know what to do. This has created a fear from the personal trainer standpoint. They don't wanna risk losing their client or being badmouthed by a doctor, so they are less willing to refer out. That is not, or this is not a good system, and fortunately we have a better way. Keep on reading. Many physical therapists, even if they are passionate about movement and want to go through various assessments and corrective fixes with their clients, do work that's not dictated by, oh look, typo, by the referring medical provider, so they can't. If that referral comes from a practice that makes up 95% of their business, you can see how the physical therapist is going to do what he is told a patient can pay out of pocket to keep going, uh, if that is even presented as an option. And from my experience, it seldom is, meaning they just do what the insurance covers and what the referring medical doctor tells them that the diagnosis is. All right, back to the book. The thing I have yet to find, and this is nothing against physical therapy, is a practice that has a system like the 12-week transformation to help patients stay engaged and see the true value in the program. My position has always been as follows. Even if the insurance is exhausted or a medical referral was for eight visits, you have an obligation to the patient to educate them and motivate them to stick with it until they have a corrective solution. That's what I'm going to add to that. Creating excitement and value for the patient is a critical step in keeping them going. Very few physical therapists, although some of them may be trained in functional movement assessments, are doing this in practice. The majority are focusing on muscle isolation exercises, post-surgical care, and honing in on a specific symptom Next page, honing in on a specific symptom that a patient presented with or was sent in for treatment by the referring medical provider. From a chiropractic standpoint, chiropractic biophysics is teaching the most detailed postural approaches. If you're just seeking a basic foundation to begin with, we briefly talk about posture in our program. Understanding it in more detail should be on your radar though. You can't fully fix movement issues and stabilize the segments of the spine when someone's stuck in a posture where their head is sticking out three inches in front of their body. Posture needs to be a consideration. I'm somewhat familiar with what they're teaching in chiropractic school now. I also work with a lot of students and recent graduates, so I get feedback from them. For the most part, the consensus is that they're exposed to a little bit more of corrective exercise and functional movement as compared to when I was in school, but it's still done on a very basic introductory level and it doesn't put the pieces together. With Moveall University, you can just about you, you, you can help just about anyone on the fitness spectrum. I don't care how athletic or how non-functional or dysfunctional a patient may be. As chiropractors, we can help them best progress to a superior state of health and wellness when we address the segment, posture, and movement. Okay, so that's a pretty quick chapter. You know, I just read that. It's like a four-page chapter or something. But that's chapter six. We move on to chapter seven, which is called Experts in Movement. But... I wanted to read this because I, I felt like this would be a good conversation point and get get some of these things going for 
all of us chiropractors out there that are maybe looking for like how do we improve or modify our current method of chiropractic practice and i'll tell you in closing one of the best things that i've found that is most effective at getting this thing across is is doing this with an automated system that you can point the patient back to for resources patients are going to need resources what does that mean if you teach them if you teach them corrective exercise you can't you can't hand them a black and white printout you can't even hand them a 10 second video clip um, or point them to like you know just just a super generic something like like patients need a guided process they need something they can track it and write it down with they need like a journal okay they need to know there's a start and an end and I'm not saying an end like they never come back again but a start and an end a segment to set goals 12 weeks 12 week transformation we, we built a program like this they need to feel like they're part of a tribe part of a group 12 week transformation they get a username and a password they, they log in to this portal all right and then they need detailed detailed exercises that speak to them that that reiterate these concepts over and over again we have hundreds of exercises that we filmed out I'm actually sitting in our new our new move well filming center which is my home gym trainer Tony is actually coming over later today for us to build out this other program that we're doing which is going to be awesome called the right to exercise which is actually going to be used for gym screenings for chiropractors and their staff to go into gyms to talk to uh, the general public, to teach them things that they should be doing before they do lifts in the gym, like uh, bench press, overhead press, squat and deadlift type movements, what type of movement pattern should be cleared, and then what are the best evidence-based mobility, stability, patterning, warm-ups before they get into that. Anyway, it's a way for them to identify if there's an injury and if they need to be checked out in more detail so they don't hurt themselves. It goes hand in hand with another program we built called Movable University for Fitness Professionals, which is for trainers. Anyway, a lot of stuff going on, I know. We have a lot of programs we've built. We have every piece of this dialed in, and uh, it's been a really fun adventure. And it's been really fun just, just figuring out what voids are out there, what things we've needed as we've built our practice and tried to really differentiate ourselves and our community, which we've done, and just make practice more fun and just make it more complete for patients. Um, you know, like yesterday, it was funny. I had a patient ask me a question, and it was like, it was such a cool moment because the question they asked me was about a sequence of how to put some of the different protocols they've learned together in a step-by-step -step process um, for their problem of having a flat foot posture, you know, a pronated foot. And I just kind of smiled because I was like, we just finished that. We just uploaded that into our exercise library. And so on a side note, all of our move all doctors, we have 122, 123 doctors now who are part of this program, they have access to this because we upload this. If we, if, we, if we add to it, everyone gets access to it inside this portal. We just made this thing called Functional Series where we have six different really common postural movement dysfunctions and then a sequence of follow along videos that point back to our extended videos for all the details and cues. So it's a quick little sequence that they can just watch and they can see, oh, so first I do this, then I do this, then I do this. And it strings it all together for them. And it just, it, it, it was just one of those things where a patient asked a question to me. And in the past, I know I would have this internal frustration in the sense that I don't have 10 minutes to explain it to you right now. I'm, I, I'm busy adjusting patients. And instead I could pull something up online in the adjusting room really quick, point it out to them, say, yep, we just uploaded it this, go watch that, and then jot down a little note in their exercise journal that they bring with them into their visit, because our patients bring their journal with them, and off they go, and they're super grateful, and I know they're gonna be guided with excellent clinical advice, they're gonna be in great hands, because we built out these things to address these questions and these issues, and I just felt this like ultimate satisfaction of going, that is exactly what I'm trying to create, is that moment every step of the way. Everything that a patient asks, they just walk away going, you just gave me the best clinical advice ever, the best guidance. I feel like you are such a leader in my healthcare. They're going to have so much confidence in what you do. They're going to get great results, and they're going to want to send their friends, family, everyone in. Like just last week, we had this stellar patient who just brought his wife and his two kids in. They get checked out. He came to a dinner with a doc event with us. He sees the value in what we do. He came in with, a, with acute low back pain. But because he understands what we do, he wanted to get his entire family checked out. And they're just excellent people and awesome, 
awesome people. You can be great patients and we'll be able to help them tremendously, which is so cool. So anyway, all right. I am going to go over now. I see, um, let's see, Arnica says that that, that, that sounds amazing. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Might, might be Arnica. That sounds amazing. Uh, Stephen Cox says, yeah, all three. Segment posture movement. Brandy Hunter, who's our office manager. Oh, no, connections wonky. It's probably on your end, Brandy. Probably on your end because uh, we know how your phone is. But um, anyway, over and out. If you haven't, grab our book. Go to movableuniversity.com slash book. We'll ship this out to you. You just cover, you cover shipping. We'll cover the cost of the book. And uh, comment below or ask any questions. Appreciate you all. Have a great rest of the day. And um, do your best out there with your patients.